What up, everybody? Instructor Beat back again here with another decimal lesson. Today, we're going to be talking about using reasonableness to multiply decimals and to know where the decimal point goes in your product. Let's get started and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to know where to put the decimal in my product by using my estimate. Okay, so we're going to be building on our previous lesson about estimates. If you haven't checked that out yet, we encourage you to do that. And we're going to be taking it to the next level today. All right, before we get started, we need to do some math vocabulary, though. This is a review from previous lessons. When we are estimating, that means when we don't want to know the exact answer, we just want to know something that is about the right answer. And that's going to come in handy when we're talking about reasonableness, which is, does my answer make sense, right? Is my answer reasonable? Okay, um, and you use reasonableness all the time in real life and you might not even know, right? If you're two feet away, is it reasonable that you would throw the baseball as hard as you can at the other person's face? No, unless that person is your brother or sister and they have annoyed you, but instructive beats does not encourage violence. Just wanted to put that out there. Okay, so let's uh, practice a little bit of our estimating. So if we want to estimate the product, okay, and even though this isn't a word problem, we always want to identify key information that's going to help us. So we want to estimate the product of four and 12 hundredths and 30 and two hundredths. Okay, this goes back to our previous lesson. And so when we are going to estimate, we're gonna round to the biggest place value, right? Four less, let it rest, and it's gonna stay a four, okay? And obviously uh, three, or obviously 30, right, would round to being close to 30. We're gonna round to our biggest place value. And so now I have the product of four times 30, right? Which obviously I know would be 120 because I'm using my four times three and then you adding my zero or thinking about this as three groups of 10 and then using my associative property to regroup them and multiply however your teachers taught them. Your estimate for this would be about 120. So we're gonna come back and visit that in a second. But first, we want to start with our key thought, okay? This is what we want to come back to for the entire lesson as what you need to know from this. This is a great time to remind you that if you do not have notes, we have guided notes in the description to our video. We'll open up a Google Doc that you can either print or type in, um, so that way you have notes to always go back and review what you are learning. But our key thought is your estimate will tell you the most reasonable place to put your decimal. We're going to be using our estimate to help us find our exact answer today. All right, let's, so let's go back to the uh, question we just answered. What is the product of 4 and 12 hundredths and 30 and 2 tenths, right? And so our estimate for this was we think our answer should be about 120. This is going to come in handy in just a second. We're not actually going to teach you how to multiply these numbers right now. We're going to give you uh, the digits that would be in your answer. Okay, so when you multiply four and 12 hundredths times 30 and two tenths, the digits that would be in your product would be one, two, four, four, two, four, right? If you didn't have a decimal, it'd be 124,424, all right? Now, if you wanna learn how to uh, multiply decimals with different strategies, check out our other playlist. We have, we have how to multiply with the standard algorithm and how to do it with grids. But today we're just focused on, we're gonna give you the digits of your product and you're gonna put your decimal in the most reasonable place. Now, the reason this is important is because no matter what strategy you learned when you were in school or if you're in school now, no matter what strategy your teacher is teaching you, whether you're multiplying with grids or you're multiplying with area models or you're multiplying with partial products or standard algorithm, this is always a great strategy to check to make sure your answer is correct. So there's a lot of different places you can put your decimal, right? You could put it here. And then that number would be uh, 124,424. You could move it one place value to the left and put it right here, right? And then your answer would be 12,442 and four tenths, right? You could move it one more place value to the left. Let me just squiggle that out. And your answer would be uh, 1,244 and 24 hundredths. You could move it one more place value, okay, get rid of that one, and your answer would be 124 and 424 thousandths. You could even keep going, and you could put it right here next to the two, right? And then your answer would be 12 and 4,424 ten thousandths. You could put it next to the one, right? And you would have one and 
24,424 hundred thousandths. Or finally, I mean, I guess you could put it in a bunch of different places, but finally you could put it here, right? And your answer would be 124,424. This would be tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millions. All right. So based on these digits, there's a lot of different places you could put your decimal. But there's only one that is the most reasonable. You thought your estimate would be about 120, which means your answer should be close to 120, right? So this one right here isn't even bigger than one. So I'm going to cross that out. That doesn't make any sense. One whole, right? Let's just look at the whole numbers now. One whole is nowhere close to 120, right? 12 is nowhere close to 120. 124 is really close to 120. So I'm gonna put a little uh, star by that, okay? 1,244, eh, that's not too far away from 120, we'll leave that one. 12,442 is nowhere close, and obviously then 124,424 would be nowhere close. All right, well, between 1,244 and 124, there's only one answer that is the most reasonable. 124 is way closer to your estimate than 1,244. So that's where your decimal has to go. When you learn how to multiply these decimals using whatever strategy you want, there's always gonna be a point where you have to put your decimal back into your product, okay? If you use your estimating and your reasonable skills, it makes it a lot easier. There's only one answer that was close to your estimate. So that's where the decimal had to go. It had to go between the four and the four to make your product 124 and 424 thousandths. Now, obviously, you're not going to write down all the different options, but because this is the first time some of you are seeing it, I wanted to go ahead and show you what you would be doing mentally. For our we do problem, we're going to show that thought process one more time, and then you're not going to have to write down all the different options. But I just wanted to show you mentally what you should be thinking as you go through this process. So our we do problem, if you are multiplying 78 hundredths times 207, your answer would have the digits 16146. Okay, so if you didn't put your decimal anywhere, it'd be 16,146. However, anytime you're multiplying, or dividing decimals for that matter, you should always have an estimate. So in my head mentally, I'm just gonna round these, right? I know 78 hundredths is pretty close to one, and then I'm gonna just keep it as 207 because anything times one is itself, right? Identity property multiplication. So I think my answer is gonna be somewhere around 207, all right? That makes the most sense to me based on where I rounded my numbers to. So I'm gonna go show you all the different options again just one more time. If we put the decimal down here, right, our answer would be 16,146. If we put our decimal here, right, our answer would be 1,614 and 6 tenths. We could put our de decimal here and it'd be 161 and 4,600 hundredths. We could make it right here and it'd be 16 and 146 thousandths. We could put it between the 1 and the 6 and it would be 1 and 6,146 ten thousandths. Or we could put it before the one and it'd be 16,146 tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. So hopefully I said all those right. I don't know. I was kind of flying through it, right? But which of these makes the most sense? Which of these is the most reasonable based on your answer? Okay. We thought our answer would be around 207. Okay. Well, 16,146 is nowhere close. A number less than one, right, because we could put a zero there for the whole numbers or the ones place, is nowhere close. One hole is nowhere close to 207. 16 holes, okay, because I'm just right now I'm looking at the whole numbers. 16 holes is nowhere close to 207. 161 and 46 hundredths is pretty close. 1,614 and 6 tenths, probably my next closest, obviously. And we already said that one was way too big. Okay, well, 161 isn't necessarily very close to 207, depending on what your definition of relative is, okay, or, or accurate, I guess, relative and accurate. I always for, confused those when I was in school, right? But 161 has the right place values, right? I thought my answer would be about 207. That means I should have a ones, a tens, and a hundreds. Well, 161 has your ones, your tens, and your hundreds, and then obviously your decimals. 
1,614 is not nearly as close to 207. It's not nearly as reasonable, and it has an extra place value in the thousands. So I know that the most reasonable answer, okay, the most reasonable place to put my decimal would be in between the one and the four, which makes my exact answer for this 161 and 46 hundredths. So I would say T equals 161 and 46 hundredths. All right, so here's our you try problem. If you are new to Instructed Beats, uh, you are going to pause the video in a second. I wouldn't do it yet because I'm actually going to give you the digits that are in the product. Okay, and you're going to try this by yourself and then push play to check your understanding. If you don't understand quite yet and you need one more example, you can just do this as another we do, and that's totally fine. It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. Um, but if you are ready to try one by yourself, okay, the product of 6 and 8 tenths and 54 and 4 tenths has the digits 3, 6, 9, 9, 2. So your job is to make your estimate and then pick the place that you could put your decimal that would make your answer the most reasonable. All right, so hopefully you just tried this out. You have your decimal place in. Let's check your work and your understanding. First of all, I should always identify that word product because it tells me I'm going to be multiplying these two, even though it told me multiplying here, which is kind of redundant, but I made a mistake. Oh, well. So I'm going to round 6 and 8 tenths to 7, okay, because I go to the biggest place value. I'm going to round uh, 54 to and 4 tenths to 50, all right, which means I think my answer is going to be about 350, okay? That's what I think my answer should be about. So based on that, I'm going to put my decimal in between the two nines to make my exact answer 369 and 92 hundredths. This is the most reasonable answer because it is the closest one to what I thought my estimate would be. So hopefully you got that right. If not, don't worry about it. It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. You can always go back, rewatch the video. Uh, you can find a friend. If you're in school still, you can ask a teacher to help you out. You can um, go to a website like IXL and practice some of these skills. All right, whatever you do, you got to keep getting better. If you got this one right and you're ready to continue on your journey, check out our next video in this playlist. As always, we really appreciate you checking us out. We know there are lots of different options online. Thank you so much. We'd love to have you join our Instruct Beats family by following us on all our social media accounts and hitting the subscribe button, the like button, and leave a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. We always try to respond. Again, thank you so much. Check out our decimal song, Instruct Beats. Out.